Hello. This is Raphael again. So while yesterday Ariel and I presented two phenomenological models of diffusion MRI, namely DTI to quantify anisotropic diffusion and DKI to quantify non-Gaussian diffusion, today I will be talking about microstructure models. In this first part of this talk, I will do an overview of some microstructure models. Then in part two, I will show how to run some other microstructure models in DIFI. If you look to the literature, you will see that there have been proposed several models. However, all these models have common aspects. In contrast to DTI, DKI, microstructure models try to relate diffusion MRI signals to concrete biophysical models. This is basically done by representing tissue with a sketch of relevant features by finite numbers of compartments. The number of parameters that the model can properly estimate depends on the amount of data available. And to release the amount of data requirements, it is common to impose fixed parameters in microstructural models. To have an idea how microstructure modeling works, in this slide, I'm showing early microstructure models used in the literature. This includes the Stanish models to characterize bovine optical nerve by representing it by three compartments. Spherical compartments to uh, represent glia, ellipsoids to represent neurons, and extracellular space. This model contains only three compartments. However, to be properly fitted, you can note that Stanis uses an extensive number of acquisitions from two gradient directions, a large number of gradient intensities, and different diffusion types. Another early model is the ball and stick model. This model can be fitted to a much smaller amount of data, but due to its simplicity, this is basically used for estimating the directional information for probabilistic tractography approaches, rather than microstructure properties per se. Another popular model is a composite hindered and restricted model water diffusion proposed by Azar. This model was proposed as a general framework to represent restricted diffusion, for example, inside uh, intercellular spaces, and hindered diffusion, assuming that this represents the extracellular space. This model can be fitted by a general number of compartments. Particularly, one restricted and one hindered compartment was used to model well-aligned structures. For crossing structures, you can add more compartments with, however, the expense of requiring the acquisition of a large number of directions and B values. A limitation of this model is that this only can represent structures with components along discrete directions. So this can be inefficient to model tissue dispersion. Nevertheless, expansion of this model were used to provide the first attempts to estimate axonal diameters or diameters distributions by incorporating the information of different gradient intensities and diffusion times. Later, an approach to model restricted and hindered compartments distributed along continuous directions was proposed by Jefferson et al., named the Near Density Model approach. This represents tissues as a convolution between compartments types in the kernel in a continuous fiber orientation distribution function that can be represented by spherical harmonics up to a given order L. This framework can generally characterize crossing or fanning compartments. It is important to note that this framework is identical to the spherical deconvolution techniques presented early today by Maxine. However, while in tractography typically constraints are imposed in the kernel to improve the ODF estimates, in microstructural model, we focus on the estimation of kernel parameters. For example, the axial and radial diffusivities of individual compartments and its volume fractions. To avoid degeneracies on fitting the parameters of the kernel, data acquired for a large number of directions and high B values is, however, required. Therefore, to promote the clinical feasibility of microstructure modeling, Several simplifications of the Jefferson neuret density were proposed. An example of this is the neuret orientation density and dispersion model, known also as Nodi model. To decrease the number of ODF parameters, Nodi focused on the estimate of an average orientation dispersion index by fixing the ODF as a Watson distribution. This distribution is analogous to a Gaussian function in spherical uh, coordinates. Although this model does not represent crossing fibers, it will indicate the high dispersion index for this scenario. To promote this feasibility, NODI also constrains the diffusivities on the hindered and restricted compartments, focusing on the apparent fraction between them. 
Due to the large reduction of parameters, this allows also the introduction of an additional compartment to model free water effects from pressure volume with CFS or EDEMA. Despite the large number of assumptions, NODI was one of the first models that could be applied in clinically feasible acquisition. Particularly, it can be fitted to a protocol identical to DKI, this is, with a couple of non zero B values and some gradient direction. Another set of clinical feasible models are the spherical mean techniques. As a mean signal DKI that I've presented yesterday, this model removes the dependency of the FODF by fitting models to the B value dependency of signals average across direction. Has an attempt to estimate anisotropy of compartments independent to dispersion, also known as microscopic anisotropy, a one compartmental SMT model was proposed, representing all TC components by constant axial and radial diffusivities. This later model was expanded to a inter and exa cellular to compartmental model with all diffusivities fixed to the intrinsic diffusivity or lambda. While this model can provide nice representation of the signal decay, a recent study from my lab showed that due to its constraint, this SMT models do not provide more specific information than DKI. And thus, they should not be used as microstructure models, but just phenological models. This leads me then to discuss what are the real potentials and limitations of microstructure models. Microstructure models can indeed provide very useful information. To illustrate this, I'm showing here the mean FA and mean NODI parameters obtained from the white matter uh, regions of all subjects of the 650 subjects of the CAMCAN project. The NODI parameters suggest that the initial declines observed in the FA are just an artifact of the orientation distribution uh, index. Therefore, initial FA declines might not be an effect of the generation processes. This is also indicated by the early increases of neural density index. So NODI can elucidate FA confounding factors, but the NODI parameters still should be interpreted with care because its assumptions and constraints can compromise its specificity. For instance, the age difference of the nodi near its density may not be related to real increases of axonal density, but just an increase of non-Gaussian diffusion within specific sources. Indeed, when comparing with DKI, nodi near its density shows a similar profiles than the mean signal DKI index. Reinforce this idea, here I'm showing the nodi parameters in acute stroke lesions, which reveal increase of narrow density index in the lesion. Rather than a real increase of narrow density, these alterations could just be a general increase of non-Gaussian diffusion effects as reported by previous DKI studies, which are known to be uh, specifically associated to several mechanisms, such as swell swelling or beating, as shown here in this figure, has changes of uh, water exchange or cytotoxic and vasogenic and OEDM effects. For understanding of the relation between neurodensity estimates and kurtosis, I will refer to this uh, manuscript. The punchline here is that while microstructure models can be very useful, they still have to be interpreted with uh, care, and for that, a knowledge of the limitation of the models are required. So I will stop this talk here and I will continue on the next part by showing how to use some microstructural models that are implemented in DivePipe.